computer. Okay, so we are recording. Do you, do you see the camera good, Brandon? Yep. Okay, great. So this is our Durable King with ELC 111 Intro to Electricity. It's October 22nd, 2020. And we're doing a, a, uh, a Zoom session from our shop. It's going to be a combination of some board stuff here and, and labs. And we're probably going to also cover Chapter 7 on batteries. That, for those of you watching, make good and sure that you, that you uh, read that chapter. It's a short one. It's the easiest chapter that we have in the book that you cover this semester on batteries and, and do that worksheet. That worksheet plus Chapter 6 and everything prior, pl please try to get all those done by this Tuesday, I think, what, the 27th? Is that right? It, it, it try to get those in because I got to get this stuff graded soon. Um, chapter chapter eight and nine are going to have to be done very soon, and we're going to cover those here on campus. We're, we're going to uh, cover uh, probably go ahead and cover chapter eight uh, Tuesday when you come in 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 place. That's a big one on, on wire sizes and conductors and figuring out things that resistors about wires and all. We got to cover that one. And then we cover chapter nine on voltage drop on conductors and wires for long runs. So we're going to cover those two. Both of those will be due by November 10. So I can grade them and be done with all the grading by November 12, my last day before I got on surgery. I got back surgery lined up for the 17th. So my last day with y'all would be November 12 as of right now. And everything has to be actually turned in by the 10th. Don't wait to the 12th, because I won't be able to grade the stuff in. Get it all done. Everything everything up to now, everything through chapter chapter one through seven is due this Tuesday. I haven't set no due dates, but we got to have them now. Uh, so I've been very, very lenient. I had not counted nothing off the late work, but, but we got to have a deadline. So try to make a priority and uh, do that. and. Um, so we'll cover chapter, um, anyway, the chapter uh, eight and nine that we're going to cover, <coughs> they'll be due on November 10, no later than the 10th. You can turn them in earlier than that. So I can grade them by the 12th, and then listen, listen, we'll get it. The exam for this class, you cannot do it from home. It'll be on Moodle, but you got to come on campus to do it because I'll be out on surgery. They won't let you do it remotely. They, they want it done here on campus, and there's going to have there's going to be a proctor, some person that's going to come in here, and they're going to bring some Chromebooks, little small laptops that belong to the school, and you're going to do it in Moodle with the Chromebooks with someone. Maybe I'm, I'm not sure. I know the Chromebooks are over in the carpentry area in that shop. That's where the Chromebooks are. Mm -hmm. I'll find out from Barney what room do you go to. To, to, to use the Chromebooks, but somebody's, somebody's going to be picked to sit with you during the exam period and to do to be a proctor, okay? It has to be a proctor for that exam. And um, it's not an open book, but you can use your Ohm's Law sheet with the pie chart. You can use that in your triangles. You can use those, okay? But other than that, it's not an open book. So it'll be it'll be a segment off of your worksheets, a little, a little, little bit off each one. And, um, and, and so... Anyway, it's, uh, the exam will be self-grading. It's going to be multiple choice of true false. And some of the stuff will be some calculations in there, but you're going to have to pick the right answer. So you need to do some calculations and know how to do them. But they'll be like a multiple choice of what is the correct answer. Okay? So you're not going to show your calculation. You're just going to have to pick the right one. Okay? It, so the exam, the, I, I was told I had to have the exam, so it grades itself automatically puts it in the Moodle so that when all that's done, that proctor, whoever that is, is going to actually go in Moodle and get the final grades, whatever they are, and put them and submit them. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to come behind and do my grading for me. It's going to be done. the last thing will be the exam. It's going to be an automatic grade that it goes in there. <sighs> if you don't get here that day, <laughs> then I, you, can't, you can't do a makeup on it unless it's going to be you have to really, uh, if an accident come up or something like that and you couldn't come, you'd have to let me know. And then we'd have to somehow figure out how to make it up later on with some proof to why you weren't here and all that stuff. So it had to be a major medical thing to be able to go back and get permission to redo an exam later on. So it would be, you know, there had to be some proof in why. So 
But anyway, so make it a point to, to try to be here on the 24th for that exam day. Uh, it's on Tuesday. And um, so, so between the 12th on my last day and the 24th, that's a little over a week. You will have all that period and not have to be in here in this class. Now, any other classes you have come for them all the way to 24th. But, but for this one, on the 12th, you have a gap in there to the 24th to study. So you will have a little over a week and watch the videos. Yes. So you go in there and I would suggest go in the Moodle and on every assignment that you've done, go in there and hit, um, go in and hit review. So whatever worksheet it is, go back to the beginning and go in there and, and, and on each worksheet hit review and you can pull it up and see it again. And then you can print. I would print them on paper and then have them put them in a notebook so you can have something to study by because it's not an open book test, okay? So you study study those worksheets. Go ahead, I would print them out if you can ahead of time. And if you ain't got a printer, I think you can come to the library and print. They may charge you per copy to do that, but you can print. Is it like 10 copies? So it's free for 10 copies? I think you get to use a, a, a copier a free. up to a certain amount in the library and then they charge it so they say anyway if you ain't got a printer come to the come to the college during the library hours and um and then you can pull up moodle in there print your worksheets and study you know and study study your worksheets so i would recommend doing that once the semester is done you're not going to be able to access moodle for this class, you won't, I don't think you're going to be able to go in there and get it once it closes. So if you're ever going to save them worksheets, you need to do it now. You need to do it quick. Um, again, because your work is not, you won't have access to it after this semester. That's the bad thing about Moodle. Moodle's, Moodle's a good thing to have, but but again, you better be printing it if you want to keep it, if it's important to you. So Now, so we are recording, and uh, with all that said, you know, I'm long-winded. So um, we had a question here. And uh, let me grab let me grab my paper. So that was on the series lab, right? It was on series lab. Okay, so we had a, we had a question here. Luke had a question about. On, on the series lab here that y'all done, lab 3-1, if you go to the last page here, we're just gonna let this Zoom session be whatever we're doing, okay, today. And um, we are gonna cover combination lab. We got, Roger has one for combination circuits. We're gonna cover that. And also, um, if we have time, we're gonna get into chapter seven on batteries. So it's gonna be kind of a mixed uh, bag here of what we're doing, it's all good. So here we go. The question uh, is, is number four on the last uh, page of, of lab three. And it says this, a circuit has two resistors connected in series, a 1200 ohm and a 1600 ohm. The 1200 ohm resistor measures 24 volts across it with a meter. And that's all it's telling you. It doesn't give you the E total. It doesn't give you the current or, or not that voltage over there or anything else. And the question is, what is E total? What, what's the power supply voltage when all you know is this information right here? So, so um, I'm gonna ask you, how can we go from this to get E total? You got any idea? It's gonna take some stepping stones to get there. But you got, you got some variables here. What can these two pieces of information give you? What can you calculate from that? It can give you the amps. Right, it can give you the amps, exactly. And so if you can get the amps, is the amps the same for both of those or different or what? It's the same. It's the same. That's your first stepping stone, so to speak, okay? So you can use these two and get and get the amps, which would be really be I total, wouldn't it? Yep. Because it's the same, you said it's the same, but all, all, all around, how do we calculate the, the amps with that there? And this is all. Uh, what's the formula? And it uh, 24 volts divided by 12,000. Or 1,200. Uh, 1,200, yeah. Oh, yeah, 1,200. 
Right, it's 24. So what's 24 divided by 1,200? Let, let Luke, Luke's the one had to have a question here. Uh, point zero zero. So I total is point zero two amps. That's the total current flow in the circuit, right? Point zero two. Yep. And then what's our next stepping stone back, you know, back this way? There's another stepping stone we've got to do before we can even go back that other way. Uh, Think of it like uh, we got stepping stones and we're crossing a river, right? We got we got we got one stone, we need another one to get across, okay? Uh find the resistance total. Use the sure. um, you, that actually you, you could actually go that route. You sure could. So if you, if you took the total resistance, what would the total resistance be? That's kind of a, yeah, there's actually two ways to do this, yeah. So what, what is our total? Um, 12, 1,200 plus 1,600, uh -huh. I believe. 2,800. So our total is 2,800 ohms. And that's a second stepping stone. So we've got, we've got a, a third stepping stone we've got to go through now. What, what would that be? We're looking for E total. So you're doing, you're doing good. You're stepping back that way. It'll be uh, the I times R. We equal E total. Exactly. We know that E equals I times R, exactly. So we know that E total will equal I total times R total. Exactly. That's 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 another way of doing it, this. Fifty six. Hmm? Fifty six. And you and you have fifty six volts. Fifty six volts. That's correct. Now I'll tell you another way that you can be done so you'll know about another avenue here. You could have taken that same 0 0.02 amps there and found the that volts with that R there and got the other voltage drop and added the two voltage drops up. You could have done that too. But honestly, there's you got those, those two ways to find the way you did it is fine. You got the same exact answer as if you took the 0 0.02 multiply by this and got, got the voltage drop across that one and add that voltage drop with a 24 and it would end up being 56. It'd be the same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly right. Is is the screen looking pretty good there, Brandon? Can you see that pretty good? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Good. Great, 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 great. It looks a little blurry. A little blurry? Yeah. Let's see. Hold on a second. Yeah, got Nicholas there. Hey, Nick, how you doing, man? Good. I can sharpen up the. Uh, that's as sharp as it's going to go when I move the focus on the camera. That's as, that's that's as sharp as it's going to get. That's better. I can get. Yeah, I can get a, a better marker. I got a mushroom, a mushroom marker here. Yeah. Yeah. So are, are you, are you, are, are, so both of y'all are at home? Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. So you, you, you good there? You, you had another one? I three more. Three more. Okay, so uh, do you you need any help getting the circuit wired or? Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. You do? Okay. Um, let me get you started on that. Let me go help her so she can move on with the wiring, okay? Right. So so All which right. problem is it? Number five. 
number five. So number five says this, there's three resistors in series. So all you gotta do seriously, anytime that you have a word problem, the first thing I always advise doing is actually draw the circuit. You need to draw the circuit out. And then a lot of questions are actually gonna kinda, uh, they're gonna kinda jump out at you, okay? So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put another resistor in here. Three of them in series. You plug the numbers in. You said number five. Mm -hmm. So look up here. You got a 120 volt source. We're going to change it to AC. You got a 120 volt source there. You have R2 has a value of 200 ohm. And a voltage drop of 50 volts. So 50 volts is just dropped across it. What is the total resistance of the circuit? You've got the power source. You've got the resistance of R2 is 200 ohms and a voltage drop of 50 volts. And that's it. Now, so the question is, what is R total? So R total would be, would be what? Now, I'm going to leave it like that and you see what you can figure out on your own while I help Renee real quick. Getting, getting set up on, on, the, on the combination circuit. So let's let you see what you can figure. And I'll bet money that you're probably going to solve it without me seeing anything at all. View it the same way. You got to start out here away from the home base and you've got to use that as a stepping stone, so to speak, to step you back step at a time so you can answer that question. And, you, and you, you're going to use your own law to do it in, in, in various steps. Okay? So I'm going to roll over here, and uh, we're going to take a look at a, at a combination uh, series parallel circuit that Renee's working on. She's she's doing lab number five. That that's your last regular regular lab for this class. And uh, let me grab my lab. So, so what you got to do is you got to have five five uh, fixtures up there to do this. Mm -hmm. Have five of those to it. And what you can do if you want to, there's already five set up over there. We can let you. No, that's that's one block you to set up. The one that Nicholas had, he's got five pictures over there. You just want to, you can go through. Right here. This one, the pictures are already there. So, probably what you can do.
Nick, she's gonna she's gonna use your same board. She's judging on where she's at with worksheets and all. It's gonna be better for her to, to use to use your board. We're because we're just running short on time. I want to help her to make sure she gets caught up on everything. And uh, so we're gonna do that. And she she owe you a fish plate or something, brother. I don't know what you eat, but, but uh, so you owe Nick uh, like a large flounder fish plate or something, brother. Nick, what do you eat, man? I don't know. You don't know? Really? No. You just give him, you, you just give him a, gift, a gift card for Bojangles or something, right? <laughs> no, a a $20 gift card for Bojangles or Hardee's and that and that, that be good. Or Popeye's. That good? No, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Study that, and then I'll be right back. Then we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. Okay. So you, you got to figure it out. Okay, and let's see. What'd you get for our total? No, not quite. So let's. We're gonna come back over here to the drawing board, folks. Alex, you want to save the time? It's going to be two days a week. Hold on a minute. If you want to see the schedule, I, I, can, I can get the schedule out. I've got, I've got schedule. I got my, I got my Zoom, my Zoom mobile here. You see me moving around the shop? I'm on wheels. <laughs> I got it going on, man. I'm Zooming. I am Zooming. Zooming. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, the, the, the motor controls will be, it'll be four days a week. Yes. The way it got set up is it had to be that way because of uh, uh, coordinating with the electrical degree, with the HVAC degree, with so much stuff coordinating and with early college people. So they had, they had to split it up that way to make it coordinate with a lot of things.
Understand, I mean, if, if they're should, should they're paying for it no. uh, that, to help you get in maintenance, just do what they say. That's what I do, and don't worry about the rest, you know. It is, it is, it is. Right. Did you understand it? Yes, sir. Okay. That's right. Oh, yeah. Eight. Well, you can walk that through that way if you want to. For Brandon and uh, Nathan. I think they they've already got it. They've already done this. They don't they don't they don't need that. You know they don't need that. So number eight. Number eight. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you have a series circuit with four resistors, or uh, do you think you're on the way with it now, or you want me to draw it? You're going to draw it? Good, okay, so you're going to draw it. That's good. So if you're going to draw that and you're going to uh, see how far you can get with it, Roger, we'll go ahead and um, you, you got that that board ready to check or do, do, what? What do you want me to do? Do you want to check? Do you want to check that, or are you, are you working on something? Is that, is that what you'd rather do? Or Yeah, listen. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and put it up here. Um, we'll, okay, we're we're back on the series lab on the very last problem on number eight on the series lab three one. And so there's a series circuit for four resistors in here. One, two. Grits and sausage in there, and that's up. Grits put some butter and water all in the Grits and sausage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm starting to get hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do y'all do deliveries? <laughs> <laughs> they four of us. You got, hey, you got enough grits and sausage for four more, whoever that is. Uh, I don't know. We're working hard out here, I'm telling you. <laughs> and, and we're going to all this effort for Brandon to do this special presentation. I think on a, a Zoom part, and I think that we've worked up such an appetite that I think y'all should like do a delivery on some sausage and eggs, you know, some grits. <laughs> I'd be pretty darn good. I, you know, homemade biscuits. Homemade biscuits, too. Oh, yeah. All right, so here we go. So four resistors. And the circuit is connected to a 24 volt power source. And it has a total of 360 watts. 
360 watts would be your total power. Total power consumption of all those together in watts. Resistor R1 consumes 40 watts. Resistor 2 consumes 65 watts. Resistor 3 consumes 85 watts. I think the last one has to be two other decisions, right? And it says, what is the resistance of R4? So um, this one would be how many ohms? How many ohms? So it's, 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 it's you know, it's, it puts a little more challenge in there. Um, but again, it's stepping stones that you use what stepping stones you have to try to get to that point. Okay. So what would be the first, the best stepping stone to get to to get you rolling here on, on this circuit here? Um. Mm -hmm. I was asking for the formulas if you can put them in. <sighs> yeah. yeah, just the formula itself, yes. Okay. Luke, what do you think is, is our first stepping stone? The easy way to look at it would be to go to wherever you have two variables at. You've got two variables here that are that have to do that, that can work together to give you something like that, that can give you some information. So that that would be that would have to be your starting point, you know, there, right? Could you do it under a different way, Paul? I don't know if you're right. If you add like a 40 C five eight five, you need a hundred and seventy to get two C T. Not. The 170 watts divided by 24 volts. But that's the leftover. That's the leftover wattage, right? Yes, sir. For this one. Yes, sir. So if you have, uh, and you're using that. So he took the 360 minus these wattages, and you come up with 170 watts here. Now that wattage is only related to that one resistor. You can't use that in conjunction with with that voltage because that voltage is actually split among four resistors. So it, you can't use it directly with it. But look, you can use the, these two together to give you something, and then use use that answer to give you some uh, to calculate other things, right? Hmm. So, what did you calculate from this? 15 watt amps. So he calculated the, the I total amps off of this and came up with 15 amps. And, and, and that's true. And so that 15 amps can be used on any of these and you can use it with this to calculate your R, right? You've got the, the, the right. The 15 amps is actually goes through all of because the series. So that current can be used with this wattage to give you what formula can you use to get resistance when you have amps and you have watts. If you go to your pie chart, if you go to P on the pie chart and find the one that uses I and P, and not the triangles, but go to the pie chart. So it's P, P divided by I squared, it's just, that, that's what it's come up with. It'll be this P divided by that 15 squared. It's going to be a small number now. It's going to be a, a really little number. Yes, that's it. It's a small number. It's not 
it's not a, a common resistance. It is very small. You can round to the third position. You could round by six. So you would round that third digit up to a six. Point seven five six on it. Yeah. It's a, it's it's, a, it's it's an unusual number. But that's the way it is. But basically, you, know, you got to start somewhere. Wherever you got two variables at, that's going to give you get you started on getting having something to use here. You know, so that's what it boils down to. You know. Right. Okay. So that we're done on this, and we're ready to, now to get on the combination series parallel uh, lab. And for those of you that haven't done it, um, we got two people here that are ready ready to do the lab, and we're going to uh, walk you through how the circuit's wired and then do the measurements. Yes, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna move our Zoom, Zoom mobile here. And uh, Roger, he was ready first. We're gonna do him and then, then we'll check through. Is that good? Actually, what we can do, let's just do it together as, as a group of three, okay? Because it's for the sake of time, it's just going to be better off. And that way, when we get done with this, we're going to we're going to step on for something else. Right? Okay. <laughs> now, so yeah, we're going to go over we're going to go over the circuit itself. Folks, I'm going to see. It's bow time. All right. Now. Okay, y'all still with me? Or are we putting you to sleep? How about, how about that? How about them, uh, that sausage and grits? Y'all got that on the way yet or what? <laughs> <laughs> We're hungry out here, I'm telling you. We're working off out of it. You start right now. Here. You'll measure the total, the total circuit current, the amps, and then you go from there. We start right now. Exactly. That's exactly right. So we got the three amigos here. We're going to knock this thing out. And we've only got a few days left in class, so we're just going to uh, conserve some time. So the circuit, the circuit goes like this. For those of you that have not done it, we got two boards in here that are already set up. So when you come in, we're gonna let y'all just come up and use one of these boards that's already pre-wired to just physically do the lab. We're gonna let you see, go through the wiring, how it's done, and then do the measurements, okay? If you're super far behind on worksheets, you better get them worksheets done because I'd rather you do that than to focus on that combination lab. That is not as important as you getting all them all them worksheets done. They got to get done. That's going to mess your grade up if you get a bunch of zeros on those. So, so get the worksheets done. You need them. You know. Matter of fact, the other chapters we're skipping chapter five on combination because we got to hit six, seven, eight, and nine is more important than five. Um, you're doing you're doing the lab for five. Let's, let's, we got to check check the circuit first. But here, if you look at the circuit here, we have. You've got two, two uh, bulbs that are in series, and then over here you've got a combination circuit of one bulb in series with a parallel set. That's called combination. You have a series of 100 watt in series with 275s. And so you got on one side you have the, the series, and then you have the combination on this side. And it, it's unusual. You don't wire things like that in the house, but it's you're going to see the laws of how the voltage distributes and how the current splits and things like that. So it's it's a typical circuit that you get in all in any kind of electrical theory class that you 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 cover this this type of thing. So I'm going to take the camera here and we're going to verify they got it wired correctly. Okay. So. We're going to 
first we're going to look for the for the, uh, the circuit. It's a, a forty a forty watt and a sixty watt in series. We're going to, we're going to verify that first. If we start out with one hundred twenty volts and we end up in neutral going back. So we put the first here for. So the wattage is going to Let's get let's get let's get a. Uh, we want a 40, a 40 and a 60 here. And then the 275s. Where's the 100 at? You got to have, look, you got to have a 40 and a 60 here in series. Those two are. So you you got them two is your series. So you didn't set up to where it looks like this. Yeah, I, I set it up like it's yeah, I didn't set it up like it doesn't look like it. Okay. It doesn't physically look that way. Okay. I just want to do it this way and show that it could be done. Right. All right, so let's just verify here. So you come It looks that's what I kind of wanted to go off of and listen let's go over there and use that one because it looks it looks like the diagram and it's just gonna be a lot easier for anybody to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick, Nick, we're we're using your board. All right. Because it looks it it looks it, it's set up the way um, the way I was sort of want people to do it. Even though they had it was wired correct, it would have worked fine. It just does it doesn't look like the diagram, so it's going to be a little confusing when we get over the meter. You don't have to use your imagination a little more than you want to. When you get your bulbs in place, we're going to put the camera up there and I'm just going to walk through the wiring real quick and then we'll do the lab together. Yeah, what I was wanting is, is it for it to look like that so it would be more, you know, you would mentally when you're reasoning it out that it would make more sense, you know what I mean? Even physically, yeah. You got it wired right, believe me, it's wired right. And it, that shows that you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. You 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 understand how to read the diagram, and you know when you go from a schematic to a real to a real to a, a physical board, a lot of times it ain't going to look physically arranged the same way. But as long as it's wired correct, it's it is right. It is right. It's right as it can be. You know, part of a lot a lot of what comes into being a good technician, electrical technician, is being able to correlate from from an orderly schematic like this that looks nice and neat to a physical situation to where things are arranged in different places but yet they're wired correctly but it doesn't look like it but it's wired right and but you can still correlate from that to a physical machine to where components are, are spread way out and, and you know you can understand if you can adapt to that that's what it takes to be a good technician um, 
But in a lot of cases, it's not things are not going to leave you on the schematic. Physically, they're not. So if we if we take the camera, we're just going to walk through real quick here. The diagram shows a 40 and a 60. 40 and a 60 in, par in, in series. So he's coming here from, from the switch. He comes over to here. He's got his 120 right here. He goes into into a 40 watt bulb going into brass with a hot and he's coming out of that neutral with a hot as well. That's not common, that's not normal to do that in house wiring, we don't. But we go in with a hot, we leave with a hot. So it goes in and it goes out in series, it leaves this box here in series and comes into the 60 watt. And that hot that left in series from that from that 40 comes into the 60 here. And then it leaves with a true neutral and it goes back to the to the neutral source. So these are really in series like that. And then this series block is in parallel with a combo. That combo takes that 120 volt there and it comes over to a 100 watt and then it's in series with a parallel set of 275s. So we're going to trace that 100 over to the uh, 120 volt over to the 100 watt bulb and then see how it splits to 275s. So his, his 120 volt is here. It distributes over this way to a 100 watt bulb and it goes, it enters in the bottom here. He's entering into the 100 watt right here. I'm gonna get my camera right here. He enters into the 100 watt here, and then he leaves it in series with another hot here leaving that. And normally that silver is gonna be neutral, but in this case it can't be. So it's 120 in and then it leaves at a reduced voltage here and it goes to a wire nut that splits it. And so the, that, it leaves that 100 watt bulb. I'm trying to make sure I can see on the camera here. This is all from here. Yeah, he leaves that, leaves a 100 watt bulb. He goes to a wire nut here and splits it. And it goes to two places. It goes to the two 75 watt bulbs, which are here. He's got it set up literally like the paper shows. So, so it splits and it goes into into this one, into that 75, and then it, it goes right back to neutral, all the way back to the source. And then you can see where it also splits, and it goes to this 75 here. It goes in hot goes in hot and it leaves it goes back to true neutral that neutral goes back up here and it daisy chains all the way back so this is a 100 a 100 watt bulb the power source goes into it leaves and it splits to 275s and then it goes neutral and it goes back home so at a glance here if you look at the overall board a 40 to 60 in series and that same 120 jumps into the 100 watt bulb it splits and goes to 275s and then it goes home with no. So that, that's the, uh, that board matches this uh, layout here, okay? Unusual, you don't wire nothing like that at the house, but it, it's, it's to prove the laws of series. When you combine them, the series and parallel and, and all that, what happens? And when you get into industrial, industrial type of control systems, you can see some unusual things. Um, you don't see anything that unusual in, in residential, but in the industrial, there's all kind of stuff you can see that's, you know, that can involve. So we're gonna cut it on and do some measurements. And so, your lab sheet, somebody's gonna write, gonna write his numbers on. Leo. Let's get a meter. 
What you got here is an unusual, unusual combination of uh, bright and dim that's not common for, for, for house wiring at all. So again, this is not going to be something you wire at home like this at all. Not not at all. <sighs> just the way you can you know get your get your measurements down pat. So the lab starts out and they ask you to do to measure the total circuit current on number 19. So put your go to amps and use that clamp there and go up where you leave the switch at before before it does any any uh distributing in there to get the amp ready. <coughs> right. That's the one you get. 0.92 amps, and you see on mine, when I did mine back a few years ago, it was like 0.83. That's close enough. That's fine. 0.92. That's for number 19. And then on 20, reconnect, reconnect the AC AM meter to measure the current flow through the 40 and the 60 watt lamps. So we're doing it as it shows in the paper here, that we're getting a current reading in that series leg there. As it shows an inline ammeter there, we're gonna use a clamp type. So you see how it does it there? Between the 40 and the 60, you get a hand reading there. He's over there. So he's getting a reading there between the 40 and the 60 with, with the amp clamp. 0.26 amps, and that's very close to what I had. That'll be for number 21. And then the question on, on uh, 20 <sighs> says, does the same amount of current flow through the 40 and the 60 watt bulb? So if you, if you pick a different point in that series circuit, see, does it, do, do you get that same current? Point two six, and then you're checking it down there. If you, depending on how you position it, you'll see it probably go point two six, point two seven. You see it, you see it change it all a little bit. It did. So you're getting the same current no matter where you go in, in that series branch, right? And so it says, explain your answer. Why, why did you get the same current? Why did you get the same current through both the bulbs? It's because it's what kind of circuit? It's because it's a series circuit. The same current through both of the bulbs because it is series. So now, uh, that was 23. 24 on the next page says, measure the voltage drop across the 40 watt and the 60 watt lamp. So you're gonna switch over to AC volts and use your clubs and get the voltage drop across each one of those lamps. Yeah, the, the V with the wave, yes, exactly. Okay. Across the 40 watt. So he's going, he's going directly across that 40 watt now. And we're getting 81, 81.2. Now there's 120 volts that's going across both of those and it's gonna split, you get 81.2 across the, the 40, and now the, the 60 watt, we're reading 
Now, let's add those numbers up and see what do we get. Add those two up and see what do you get. Okay, they got 118.7, and that, that's going to match whatever the main, you know, the main vote is coming in, okay? So you see how it does distribute. It, 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 it does it proportionally because the bulbs are different. They're different resistances, different wattages. You got 118.8 right there is, is the main voltage. You leave it on there. Show, show them where you got that at. He's gone way over. He's gone way over at the main power strip. Coming in, at the main power strip. He's getting that one eighteen point seven right there because he's he's way over where it comes in. At. So if you can see that, that does prove that those two voltages that split proportionally across those two uh, bulbs there, it did add up to be. The same thing that they got when they added their individual voltage drops. Okay? This is reinforcing the rules that you've learned so that they get they, they sink in more, okay? So the next thing is is it says add the voltage drop across the 40 and 60 watt lamps, which you just did, does the sum approximately equal the total of voltage supply from the circuit. Okay, and, and it does. And that's that's for number 26. What you just did there. Let me sit down so I can stabilize this camera here and watch the screen. I'm trying to be a cameraman and, and all that at the same time. Say it again. What? I say yes. Yes, it says it says does it approximately equal that? And and you would say you would say yes. Uh, if it matches it perfectly, you could say that. You know, I put the number in there and I say yes. Okay. And then it says use Ohm's law and compute <coughs> the forty and the sixty watt lamps. So you're going to take the individual voltage drop, but you got to call each one. What's wrong? Tired. And you're going to divide it by that same 0.26 that you got amps. And it's going to give you the hot resistance of each bulb in, 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 that, in that series section there. Uh huh. Okay? So that's something you can do on your own. We can go ahead and finish the lab out. So you understand how to do that? Uh -huh. Okay, good. So we'll, we'll click right on along and finish the measurements. So the next measurement is going to be number 28 here. And it says, uh, connect the, the, the ah. ammeter, which would be your current clamp in this case, to measure the current flow through the, the circuit branch that contains the 100 watt. Trying to stabilize the camera. You want to measure the current that goes through the branch that has the 100 and the 275s. So if you look here on the picture here, it's showing you it do the amp reading where it leaves the 100 before it actually splits to the 75. So catch it before it hits the wire nut. Um, so this is 100 watt, and then this is the 75. He's catching it before it distributes to the 75. So he's going to get that total for that whole section over to, for that combo circuit. That's fine, right where you're at, right there. Point, point six five. He's catching it, leaving the hundred watt bulb before it splits and goes to those two seventy five. Okay, and it was point six five. And see, so yeah, mine. What I did mine a few years ago was was very close to that. That's number twenty eight. And so the next, the next one is. Measure the voltage drop across a 100 watt lamp. So you're going to switch over the voltage and check volts across, across that 100 watt. So he, he's up there across the 100 watt, and we got uh, 77.3 volts. 
You know, you're not getting the whole 120 because you've got a combination circuit here, right? A CB7.3 wood. Okay. And then the next question would be using Ohm's law, compute the resistance of the 100 watt lamp. So you take the actual voltage drop that you had and the actual current that went through that bulb and let it give you a, a hot resistance of that bulb in this situation, okay? So you can put those two measure values of voltage and current and it's gonna give you uh, a hot resistance for number, for number 30. It would be it, it, yeah, it would be that voltage that you had in number 29 divided by the current that you had in 28. So it'd be number 29 divided by 28. That sounds like in the right range. Yeah, my, my, my number was a little bit different, but, it, but it's going to be. You know, you can have small differences in the bulb resistances, and it can you know can make my numbers be a little different than yours. And that's that's expected. I, you know, I expect to see that. You know. Okay, everybody cool? Now, so the next thing it's asking for would be um, measure the voltage drop across each of the 75 watt lamps. So he's gonna, you're gonna check voltage. Well, now, when you're doing voltage, do you use the clamp or do you use the probes? Now, 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 now seriously, some, some, some and meters per current actually do go in series and they're hardwired like this is a hardwired ammeter, a physically wired ammeter. But look, this meter here does not have any jacks on there for reading amps. If you look on the meter, just, just to clarify that, the jacks on that meter right there, that, that red one says V and ohm. It doesn't say amps. You see that? Where my thumb is, it says V and, and, and then the horseshoe for ohms. So those probes can't measure amps on this particular meter. Now there are some meters that you can plug in and do a physical amp meter in series going into these jacks, but that means you're gonna use the clamp, the clamp for amps only. Okay. So he's checking voltage drop across the semi here. No. 41.4 across both of them. Let's go back here. 41.4 and then on over this other one. <laughs> 41.4. So you got the same identical voltage across each one of them parallels there. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and it says, was, was the voltage drop across each of the 75s the same? Why, why, or why not? So it was the same, right? And why was, why was it the same? Because they're parallel, yes. Uh, so here you've got a combination circuit, that's why it's called combo. You got series in series with two parallels. And that's a combination circuit right there. Again, you don't wire stuff like that at home if it ain't done that way, but in the industrial, there's no telling what you'll see in, in, in plants. You get in the industrial control systems, it's you'll see stuff that's pretty uh, pretty amazing. Uh, it all depends on the, the, the needs of, of a circuit. What does the person uh, have to do electrically to get something, some kind of a uh, function out of a circuit that they want that is going to determine what's, what you end up seeing. Uh, so whatever it, takes whatever it takes to get a particular circuit function, that's, what, that, that's the reason why you're, you're seeing these different things like this. Uh, anything that works, yeah, 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 exactly. So now we flip on over to 34, and it says reconnect the ammeter to measure the current flow through one of the 75 watt lamps. So you're just going to get the amp, the, the amp reading there with the clamp. Switch it over to amps. These these lamps are good on you learning how to switch that meter and knowing when to switch it, and then do you use the probes or do you use the clamp? You know, so you're getting used to using a meter. Right, you're gonna check the amp, the amps for each, for, for one of the 75s, for one of the 75s. So he's getting around it. 
And again, without that, with that and meter, you're going to get around one wire, not two. Point three three. Point three one. Okay. And and that's going to be the answer for for number thirty four. And then it says. Use Ohm's law and compute the resistance of that particular bulb. You take that voltage drop that you had, divided by that current, and, and you do the resistance of that one bulb. And then you check the amp, the amp flow through the other 75 watt. Point three one. See, it was fairly close, okay? And 38 says, add the two measurements of the currents flowing through the 75 watt lamps. Is the sum approximately the same as the current flow that went through the 100 watt lamp? Okay, and, and what, what they're asking there is this if you go back to the diagram, it's when you add up the branch currents of these two, the individual branch currents of these two, you add them up, does it equal what was up in here before it split? And it's supposed to because. The current that enters a junction like that wind up when the, when the current enters it and it splits, there's a there's a current law that's called Kirchhoff or Kirchhoff's current law. It's not mentioned in your book, I don't think, but it's a German guy that said that the current that enters that enters a junction or a node is going to be equal to the currents that leave it. So whatever current enters a junction point, it gets it, whatever it is, and when it splits, that current will equal what the two currents that split from that junction point. That's called Kirchhoff's current law, okay? All right, so, um, just about done here, go back to, uh, when you add those up, it, it was approximately the same. And then the last question on 40 says, Add the amount of current flow that went through the 4060 leg branch and also the current that went through the branch of that had the 100 and the 75. So you want to add those up and see does it equal the total current? Is it approximately equal to the total current? And um, we'll let Roger tell us if, if it does and I'll have to relay it. Okay. I'm sorry, we're worried. I'm sorry, Okay, you checking your map up front, but yeah, because I was, was talking about that last one. But, uh, oh, the last one. Okay. Let's get you caught. Let's see here. Um, okay, so you need, to get, you need to get these here. Get the current flow through that other, through that other. What was the current flow through through, through that 75 there? Mm. 0.31. Looks like it, yeah. Does it approximately equal what went through the 100 watt bulb? Go back to keep your reading off of the 100 and see if it, is it, is it, is it approximately equal. The current, the current that went through the 100 watt would, would be on number 28. They're, 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 they're approximately the same. They are. And you get little fluctuations as, as time goes along. Anyway, you, it, it'll go back teeter totter some because of the voltage in the room is teeter totter a little bit. So it's not going to be rock solid. Never. I mean, it is hardly ever would it be rock solid. The power in the room has to be nice and stable with nothing else cutting off and on. No air handlers kicking in and out. Up here, you've got the mezzanine up here, everything cutting off and on. And that makes the incoming voltage fluctuate down in tenths of volts. It's typical that happened all, all through a lab and just see if those change a little bit. Um, yeah, so the last question would be, you're going to add up the current that went through that 4060 branch and then the 175 branch. So when you add up the currents that go through this branch 
and the current in that branch, all of that should equal the main current, the I total. And, and see, see, see if that, if that does read that should. Basically, you, you're going to compare the numbers of of, uh, of number 28, which, which includes that right branch over there. Number 28 represents all the currents in that section there. And then the current that went through that 4060 branch, that was the first ant reading that you got back in the beginning. It was actually on, um, Point sixty what now? Point sixty two on, on on for what answer? Right, yeah, 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 for that one. For thirty eight, yeah. You're adding up the two the two currents that went through each one of the 75 watt bulbs. So we're about to do that now. Okay, all right. So this one. If you go back, you go back to early to early reading. Really, I do, I do the same thing. Yeah, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. And these were somewhat like Yeah, 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 yeah,
actually right now he's just not possible for him What's to do uh, so, I know that's right. Yeah, he watched everything. We'll, we, you'll be fine for that, Brandon, because I know you got a different situation right now. Yeah. Thank you. Man, I'm going to put you down for this in here, man. Did, did, you, did you understand what you saw good? Appreciate it, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna put you down on the grade book for doing this lab because I know right now you, you've explained to me your situation and that's, and that's okay, okay? Yeah. What we call accommodate. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we know how to do that, okay? All right. Yeah. yeah. This year's been different and, and, and you gotta be different. You got you got to roll with the changes, you really do. If you're gonna, I mean, you know, you got to, uh, Accept the things you cannot change, change the things you can. That's called the serenity prayer, you know. <laughs> yeah, even though I tested negative, I still didn't want to risk it, you know, getting anybody else infected. Right, right, because of another person in your household. Yeah. <laughs> you had it, yeah. But uh, my dad supervises inmates for prison systems, and that's uh, that's where he got it from. Right. He uh, supervises them building ductwork and air conditioning systems in prisons. Yep. So, is there any way that y'all can isolate from each other um, or not? Not really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever he's in the house, he's wearing a mask, and he's sleeping in my brother's old room. Yeah. But, you know, you still got to be around each other. <laughs> Can't help it. Yeah. So, you're going to wait until he's clear, right? And then you, yeah. I guess you test again. Yeah, I'll test again whenever he gets cleared up and make sure I ain't got it, you know. There you go. That's the best thing to do, yeah. Well, I work with you on this stuff, man. I, I You know, I'm – we got a camera, and I, you know, we got Zoom, and we'll we'll be all right, okay. And, all right. And you're, you're, I need to get up with uh, I need to get up with Mr. Jason Miller for my eight for my AH, AHR 111, 110 class or whatever. Because I, I tried to find him, I tried to find him in my student email, and I ain't got his email. It's Jake Miller, J A J A K E is his name. Okay, Jake, Jake Miller. That's why Jake. I couldn't find it. And it, and it may be Jay Miller. You can see, try Jay Miller at, at Samson CC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let him know. He, he'll accommodate with you. He'll work with you on things. Just to explain what's going on. And we, yeah. we, we, have, we have to accommodate you, man. We have to. That's our job. So. Yeah. I just needed to get up with him and let him know what's going on. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Let him know now. Let him know now. And that way he can make some uh, – Maybe he could do what I'm doing. I mean, I, I know I don't know if he's got one of these cameras or not, but if he ain't got one, he, he you know, uh, Barney yeah, can get him one, you know. He could put it on Moodle or something, whatever right. we're doing. There. Exactly. He may he may be able to do a Zoom class like what I'm doing, try to make it real, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you could ask him if he could do that. Even on the laptop, it's got a built-in webcam on that laptop. I could move the laptop around and not even have to have this flexible camera. Uh, so – these new laptops, they got cameras built into them. So, yeah. So, so anyway, um, <clears throat> so one thing, one thing that, that, that I would like to touch base on here. Is chapter seven. Chapter seven. Everybody need needs needs to jump on seven. And I'm going to switch over real quick here for a minute, and and cover a little bit on seven. We got about ten minutes left. And, uh, so, friends, I'm going to put your name here on Luke's paper. All right. And, and I'll, I'll record it on, on my spreadsheet as, as, as done. You already got your name. Okay. Oh, your mask up. Sure. Right, so you got all your mask done. You got your mask done. Yeah. You got all his ears. Good, great. So, uh, so, Brandon, you just did a remote lab right there. Uh, so, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and put you down right now.
You want an on-ball pie chart? Okay. How about that? Now, the cards, how about the, you want, how about the little cards? You want the big, the big, okay? <laughs> roll over here. Oh, hold on a minute. I wanted to touch on, 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 on one thing on chapter seven if we can work it in, if we can. find an Ohm's Law pie chart here for somebody, but I may have left them in my office. Definition of bolts. <clears throat> I think I'm going to get them out of my office there, uh, uh, Luke. Luke, them things, them, them sheets are in my office. They're in my office. They're in my office. You have to remind me. Just remind me. Yeah. But look, that card, that card, that card has it all over it. Yeah. You, just, you want a bigger one? Yeah, that's fine. Just help me remember. Just help me remember. Um, chapter seven on batteries the only thing that I would even need to discuss at all we don't even need to discuss any of it because it's just so simple But I, I did get the worksheet in Moodle, and, and uh, y'all try to try to. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can do a quick screen share here, and pull up pull up something that that may help. Um, let's see if I go back to. Um, let's see, I've got to get. I got to minimize some screens here real quick. Okay, can't minimize that. Go back to here. Let's see. And, Y'all kind of watch just for a second here. Let me do a screen share here, and I'm just going to discuss a, a one, one little detail here. Uh, let's go back widescreen and screen share. Now, do y'all see? Do y'all see my uh, PowerPoint? Yeah. You see where it says batteries? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. You see large screen now? Yep. Okay, now, on batteries, let's just hit, 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 hit one, one main high spot. And it may not even be an, an issue at all. Read, read through there about the different types of cells. Primary cells are like disposable batteries like we use in flashlights. Secondary cells can be recharged, like you see on emergency lighting and things like that, or maybe some power, you know, power tools, all your drills have rechargeable secondary type of battery cells that are like lithium or NICAD or, or lead acid. <sighs> and uh, those are primary cells that can be disposed of, watch batteries, flashlight batteries, so on. Different voltages. 
and then they go through the construction of how batteries are made on the inside with the plates and then the the dielectric what's inside there the chemical makeup of the batteries um, you just go through and read it some of them are sealed batteries maintenance free um, the Higher voltage batteries will contain more cells in them. For instance, if you have a forklift, a forklift, if you ever if you ever get off of a forklift and open up the seat, there'll be a lot of batteries, big batteries up under that seat. And like a, a typical forklift may have batteries that look like car batteries, but a lot of them under that seat. And like a typical one may have a big battery and each one of them will be like two volts a piece. And it could have 18 cells, 18 cells up under that seat under your forklift. And the 18 cells would be in series, and two volts a piece would give you a 36 volt battery on a forklift. So typical forklifts can be 48 volt forklifts, depending on. But those big batteries are physically wired in series the way you did these bulbs. Yeah, a golf cart. Uh. And do what with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But if you put, let's see, if you, you know, for instance, for instance, right here on, on this flashlight, this flashlight here has got a battery pack in it, okay? And it's got, when I open this up here, it has, it has three, three AAA batteries in there, those three, and they're physically connected in series in that pack there. So in the, in the, <laughs> Piece, one and a half volts a piece and so one and a half times three when you put them in series is going to give you how much about four and a half volts so that little battery pack has three batteries that are in series okay and it gives you about four and a half volts for that for that led there so that's a, a small example of how batteries can be in series and then sometimes they can be in parallel okay like you said a, a golf cart or airplane motor that you may have a combination of batteries okay yeah but it, it's common it, it's common on on four sweepers uh different things like that uh golf carts that you've got more than one battery and they may be in series or they may be in parallel so Bottom line is if you want to have a higher voltage than one battery, you're going to put batteries in series to build up to some voltage that you need. But if you need the same voltage, a common like 12 volt, but you need a lot more current than, than a 12 volt battery can give you, you take two 12 volt batteries and put them in parallel, and then it, it gives you the same result of 12 volts output from two 12 volts when they're in parallel, but it doubles the amps. So the, the cranking amps, if you have a, something that you need higher cranking amps than, than one battery can do like on a vehicle you put two batteries in parallel and it doubles your cold cranking amps on a diesel truck okay for instance so if you had 750 cold cranking amps on one battery and you wanted more cold cranking amps you put two batteries in parallel and it would give you double that on cold cranking amps because the the amps we know in parallel that the branch currents will, will add to equal the total current, right? So your, your cold cranking amps would be like two branch currents in parallel, like you just saw here. And those currents would add to give you a higher cranking amp capacity for that for that truck, okay? So that's, that's kind of the, the basics of what do you do with different batteries to give you what do you want? Do you want higher voltage than one or do you want more current than one? So if you want a higher voltage, you, you just keep putting them in series. But then the current's going to give the same as, as it would be for the world. world. Say it again. Okay, now, so that gives you the basics of that. Now, on, on solar fields, like on, on for solar power, when you go out of these fields that have all these panels out there, each solar panel in a field generates from the sun a small DC voltage. And that, that DC voltage, they put those cells out there in that field, they wire them in series, a whole bunch of them. And they'll do a, a, so many of them in series, and then they'll put a series bank in parallel with another series bank. 
and they come up with a with a network of solar cells out there that ended up giving them a voltage that's high enough to use to put on the power line. They'll, they'll take that DC voltage off of those power cells, and when it gets up high enough, they'll run it through an inverter, and they'll convert a high voltage DC into AC. And then they put it on the grid, and they and then we use it. So they're, they're taking DC off of solar cells by putting them in series or parallel and a combination of all that. And they get it up in the right range so they can run it through something called an inverter that converts that DC into AC that we use. And that's, that's, how, that's how we get that solar power. It's the stuff that we've been dealing with series and parallel, they're doing it with batteries. They're doing it with solar cells or DC cells like batteries, okay? Um, but the current, the, the current that you can get from a battery is going to depend on the voltage, the physical condition, and the resistance of your load circuit. That's going to limit um, the, the current output. And then how many cells you have is going to determine the output voltage when you, depending on, like on a forklift, you may have 18 batteries in series to give you 36 volt battery. And the maximum current provided by internal is, is, is limited by the internal <laughs> resistance of a battery. And then the electrolyte condition, the chemical condition inside the battery that that has to do with the uh, the limits of it, the plate size, the number of plates inside the battery. Now, this is the main the main thing I wanted to go over, and I'm going to stop because it's time to go. When you look at something called a amp hour rating of a battery, yes, amp hours, amp hours. If you wanted to know how many hours could I run a drill. Okay, how many hours can I run a power drill? And it's rated at so many amp hours. So whatever it says on the battery in amp hours, you know, if it says, you know, 10 amp hours, and then you're going to be drawing, say, two amps, two amps whenever you're drilling, and you want to know how many hours can it run, then you take the amp hour rating, if it says 10, or whatever it happens to be, the amp hour rating divided by the amps you're going to draw, and it's gonna say it, that it could run for five hours, okay? And, and that's really all I wanted to do, to do is to go over and, and tell you that whether it's a, a, a drill or any kind of battery whatsoever, they all have an amp hour rating, amp, 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 amp hour rating. And that's, it's on the data plate on the drill. It tells you on the drill what it's draw. It tells you right on there, right on the name plate, it'll tell you, tell you that. So you get the amp draw of the drill, and then you get the, the, the amp hour rating of the battery, and you divide the amp hours by the amps, and it's going to tell you how long it'll run. Hmm? It, yeah, it would, yeah. We're talking, we're talking constant run. So if it's intermittent, you can stop it, and then you, you would start your time over again. Lithium batteries, they, it all, they all have amp hour ratings on them. They all have them. I just replaced a battery I had to pay 30 something dollars for my house. That it's for an outside siren for a wireless ADT system. And that battery's been, been up there for a couple of years. And it's an outside siren. And I kept wondering the whole time, when's that thing gonna give out? Are they gonna pay for it? Well, when I bought the system, they said they were gonna provide all the batteries for life. And I said, man, that sounds almost too good to be true. And it was. <laughs> because when I called them, I said, look, my outside siren is, is showed up as a fault on my display, low battery. And they said, well, we don't carry them batteries no more, and the customer has to buy them and put them in. And I, or we, if you buy the battery, we can send somebody out and we're going to charge you for a service call. I said, no thanks. So I got on YouTube and looked up the procedure for replacing it, and you had to go through and do something called decalcify. Whenever you take the back, when you put the new one in, you got the, when you take that, that panel off and you put the new battery in there, you got to hold a button in. It's like a, where the cover hits a, hits a limit switch, a safety switch in there. So when you take that, that cover off, you got to hold, hold a button in and you put the new battery in. You snap the battery in and then there's pigtail. You don't plug it into the board yet, snap it in, into a holder, and then you hold a limit switch inside that sign ring and then you plug in the pigtail off the battery. And then you got to wait so many seconds and then you'll see that light will flash and then it'll at that point you let go of the, of the little safety switch and then it's going to go through a, a chirp and you hear it chirp and make a sound then you can put the cover on and then it's called depacify the battery 
I had to go through all that stuff. But that battery costed me 30 bucks by the time I got it on. I ordered it through Walmart.com. And, um, yeah. Can we turn some outside siren? It's a siren outside. It's a weatherproof siren that that bolt is mounted on the side of the house. Well, it's actually, I got, we got it anchored on there with, with, with cement anchors, you know, in the brickwork, so it's bolted to the wall outside. But there's no wires. Wireless, so it's, it's a wireless and it runs off the bolt. So, like, how do you no, it, it, listen, if you open up any door, if you open up any door at all, in any door at all, window or door, I got I got sensors on all the doors and windows and everything, right, the, the garage door. If you violate any of those, it's going to set the alarm off. It's going to call the police. It's going to call them. And it's going to set off that alarm out there, that siren ring that just wireless. It's going to make it, you're going to get all over the neighborhood. The siren, all the siren does is it just, it just blast out in the yard. But the system dials in, it dials ADT, and then they call the law, and they call me. But a 30-something dollar battery, man, I'm telling you, that, I went, ouch. So, anyway, but that that's all I wanted to say. Um, you know, you can, the, the rest of the chapter is a piece of cake. So, um, not much to it. But look, you see that picture right there? That's showing batteries that are connected in series right there. That, that's what you may see like un, under the seat of a forklift, for instance. Well, you see big batteries in there, and, there, and they got copper bars, bus bars that are connected them. That's something like what you might see under a forklift or something big. It's using a lot of big batteries, you know. To give you a large voltage and high current, you know, like I say, forklifts I used to work on at the plant, they were either 36 volt or 48 volt. And it was a different charger. The chargers were like this big. They go cable, you plug them in it, it, it at night, and you got to keep checking the water in them. You put the steel water in them. If the water gets too low, they won't charge up like you have. To. The honey pounds in the plate, the plates, the plates. So, if, so if you if you're dealing with if you're dealing with batteries that have to be refilled, you got to put uh, if they say put the steel water in them, you do that. You would open up the put safety glasses on, uh -huh. open the batteries up, and you would put that special water in there. If you get over the plates. That's so supposed to be checked every day, or it may spill out. But I used to have an operator come up to me in the morning, and they say, "Well, my my forklift won't run, and I had it plugged up all night long." And I said, "Did you put water in it yesterday? Or did you put water in it before you plugged it in?" Well, no, I didn't check it. So I got down there and I, and I op start opening up the cells to find out we got cells that are the water's below the, the dividers and cells. And so if it's like that, they're not going to it's not going to it's not going to charge up. Um, so that's another thing on, on, on those that have to have water in to keep the electrical up high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would it look like? Physically, what would it look like? You'd have the pluses together and the, and, and the minuses together. Plus to plus, minus to minus. Okay. Yeah, it would be plus to plus, and minus to minus, and you'd go off of that plus. They go to your load and the minus will go to the load and it'll double your current capacity. Whatever your amps is, it'll double. But the voltage stays the same. So if you had 750 cranking amps, it gives you 1500 cranking amps. Because I1 and I2 would equal 1500 cold cranking amps. All right, Mr. Derwood, I'll see you later. Oh, a lot more, a lot more cranking amps. Yes, sir. Have a good weekend and uh, uh, just keep us posted. And I'll, I'll, I'll do the same thing for MNT 110 Tuesday morning. The same thing. I'll zoom it out to you. Just see you later, Roger. Yep. Thanks, buddy. All right, have, see you later. have a blessed weekend and hope, hope your daddy gets well soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get that um, I'll get it Tuesday. Okay. Just text me when I'm heading that way and, and I'll, you know. All right. Thank yeah. you. Sir. Yes, sir. Have a nice weekend. All right. Y'all have a blessed weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining. And um, uh, this is Durwood King with Sanson Community College. And uh, for anybody that's uh, outside watching that's not a part, I'm, uh, you can contact me, dking at sampsoncc.edu. Give you information about our programs. We've got the industrial systems degree, the electrical degree, electrical certificate. Um, we've got welding out here. We've got all kinds of good stuff. 
whatever you like. Uh, you can come out here and get you get your education, uh, certificate, or degree, and I uh, put you in a better uh, step up in, in your career. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, and God bless y'all. Thank you.